Many thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this week's video. There is nothing more powerful than the knowledge of your current self when compared to the lack of knowledge of your former self. And while I was preparing for this video, well, it was a real eye-opener for me as to all the things I felt I was doing right at the time. But, but looking back and knowing what I now know, I realized that these were all just distractions, honestly, that were not helping me whatsoever. In all actuality, these were all things that were really hurting me and slowing down my own progression. And I want to share with you today the advice that would have been a real game changer for me back when I was first getting started in hopes that uh, you can, I guess, avoid many of the same pitfalls I found myself in or, or I guess slow down, so to speak, that negatively impacted me during my early days of photography. And after kind of noodling on, on this idea for, the, for maybe the past month now, I discovered seven nuggets of advice that I wish someone would have told me years ago as it would have saved me a great deal of time. And the first piece of advice is something I call composition is the way. And the reason this is so important to me is because when I first got started, all that I paid attention to was camera gear. I wanted to know who was coming out with the best new camera. Should I get a full frame camera? Should I change this? Should I change that? Is there a better lens, better tripods? What can I do to buy my way into better photographs? And there's really just no way to do that. But composition, if you want to improve your photography in the fastest way possible, become a student of composition. Here's one. Of, here's my very first image. This image is very important to me because this is the very first photograph that I took that, excuse me, that I would consider a landscape photograph. And as you can tell, it's completely out of focus. It's a mess, don't judge, but it is the very first one I ever created. And here is another one of my early photographs. And as you can tell that from a compositional perspective, none of these images are very good at all. And like I said, because I, I didn't focus on composition, it wasn't until about two years into my photography uh, career that I started to focus on composition. This is that kind of the time where I was like, you know what? Maybe that's the way to improve my photography the fastest. It's not focusing on camera gear and the best of this or the best of that, but reading all the information you can consume on composition, articles, books, uh, watching videos, listening to podcasts, whatever the case may be, becoming a student of composition, I feel is hands down the fastest way to improve one's photography. Now, the second piece of advice is something that I call rotate. And I know it sounds a little bit weird, but this has now happened to me multiple times, not so much anymore because I now understand the, the mistake that I make or I used to make, it, but it's one of those things that when it does happen to you and maybe it has happened to you before and if it hasn't happened to you, it probably will happen to you eventually. But once it does happen to you, it hits you like right in the face. You're like, oh my God, I can't believe I just did that. But here's an example of a trip to, uh, maybe a couple years ago. I was so fixated on this composition from the, from the cactus to the to the light and to the, the beautiful light on the uh, the mountains in the background and i sat there and just kind of hammered away at this composition for about an hour until the light started to fade off the mountains and i felt that you know i got the best of this scenario and it was time to pack up and go home pack, put everything back in my bag slung my bag over my shoulder and i turned around and i saw this right here unfolding behind me now, I don't know what I would have done with this from a compositional perspective, but just knowing that that was happening behind me, and when I saw that happening, I couldn't believe it. I'm like, Mark, you this literally was happening for an hour, or it, 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 I was there for like an hour and a half working on that composition, and I never turned around one time, and I think that's what was so amazing to me, not one single time. I was so fixated on the direction that my, that my camera was pointing, I never rotated around one time. Here's another example right here from a recent, or not a recent trip, but a trip to Moab a couple years ago, where I was so focused on the light and the monuments in the background and the reflection in the puddle. I was trying to make the puddle look bigger than it really was. I had a wide angle lens. I wanted to get really close to it to make it very dominant in the frame. I captured the image I was pretty happy with. I was putting everything back in the bag, slung the bag over my shoulder, turned around and saw this unfolding. And this is just an iPhone uh, image but this was happening behind me the entire time and I never even noticed it, never even paid attention to it one time. And it, when it does happen to you, it just, it kind of hits you like a ton of bricks because it makes you realize you never turned your head one time or you would have definitely noticed this unfolding. So when you get on location, be aware how long you have been transcended or you've been focusing on one direction. Maybe just look to the left or the right or look behind you just to make sure that there's nothing unfolding behind you that you might want to be aware of, uh, might be aware of. Now, this next piece of advice is something that I call changing perspective. And I've mentioned this before in a couple of videos that I don't have a, a, the best back in the world. I got an old back injury from moving back in my 20s. And it's just been kind of lingering pain for, for actually ever since then. So it gets better. It gets worse. Never mind. <laughs> the details don't matter. But 
when I would get on location, it was all about being comfortable. So I'd pull the tripod out, lift it all the way up to my eye, put my camera on my, on my tripod, and that was my composition at eye level because that's what was comfortable for me. Being comfortable, it's important, I do agree, but there's a lot more interesting ways to take photographs sometimes because at the end of the day, we're all walking around with our eyes on our heads. Genius! So we see everything at eye level. So when you take an image that's maybe a little bit lower to the ground, or maybe it's a little bit higher pointed down, whatever the, whatever the case may be, if it's anything different than eye level, you're automatically creating a unique view for somebody to look at because we don't, we don't crawl around the world on the ground. So if you photograph something low to the ground, that immediately looks unique. Here's an example from, uh, from Maui where I took this image at eye level. And as you can tell, you know, it's okay. But I decided to take the next photograph much, much lower and I came away with this. And I think you would agree that this is a much more impactful, much more interesting image than this right here. Got another example right here from uh, Central Oregon where, um, you know, it's an, it's an okay photograph, but getting much closer to these beautiful moss covered rocks in the foreground has come away with this. And as I kind of toggle this back and forth, you can just see how much more impactful it is just to get lower to something. It doesn't have to be an incredible foreground, but just getting a little bit lower to create something a little bit more unique. Here's one more example right here where, you know, it doesn't always have to be low. You know, it could be low into the left, low into the right, low and angle down, low and angle up, whatever the case may be. This example here is, is shot at eye level, but this image right here is much, much lower and shifted to the left. Once again, eye level down into the left. And you really pick up all these beautiful autumn leaves on these rocks and the water pouring over the rocks. And it just makes for a much, much more interesting image. Now, the fourth piece of advice is something that I call time it right. And when I first got started, when I would go out for photography, it was just based off of my work schedule, which a lot of times had to do with um, on my lunch break. Maybe I would just go down to my, a lake in my neighborhood and take some photos or in the woods behind my house. And a lot of times those aren't always the best conditions and not paying attention to the time of day you're going out, not paying attention to the weather, the cloud cover, more importantly, is, is a, really a recipe to make it kind of difficult on yourself. And I got some really, really good examples of this kind of before and after images taken in harsh light versus taken in very nice light. And I think that paying attention to, you know, not only the cloud cover, you know, if it's a cloudy day, sure, you can probably go out and photograph at any time. But if there's no clouds in the sky and the light is very harsh, you might want to make sure you go out in the morning or go out in the evening uh, because the afternoon is probably not going to work out for you. And in this image right here, this is a, uh, an image captured, I think maybe like three in the afternoon, a couple hours before sunset, there was no clouds in the sky. And you can see that the light is just extremely, extremely harsh, very bright highlights, very deep shadows. And this is just a very distracting and uncomfortable image to look at. But this image right here captured during the golden hour is much, much more interesting. Now sure this is a, an edited image because I'm certainly not going to waste time editing this photograph. It was awful, but this right here is much more easy on the eyes, much more subtle light, better highlights, better shadows, better colors, as opposed to this right here. So just going out at the right time of day is absolutely imperative. One more example from Yosemite, very bright highlights, very dark shadows and waiting about two hours later, you get that nice golden light. Now I don't think this photograph is anything exciting. The, the sky is actually pretty bland, but the lighting is much better, much better, or I should say much softer golden highlights. The shadows are a little bit better controlled versus this right here. So time it right is very, very, very important. Now the fifth piece of, piece of advice is something that I understand, or I understand, that I call manual understanding. Now, what I mean by this is understanding how to use manual mode. Now I'm not saying that you have to use manual mode because you absolutely do not have to use manual mode. But when you understand how to use manual mode, that automatically is going to make you a better photographer because you're going to understand how your camera works. You're going to understand the exposure triangle. You're going to understand the relationship between aperture and shutter speed and ISO. It's all going to make more sense. You're going to understand how to create a reasonable exposure. And most importantly, you're going to understand how to become more creative with your camera settings. And that is huge. This is the very first time that I ever started to really experiment with manual mode. And you can see what a disaster it was. Just looking at this histogram, it's that U shape. There's no, no mid-tones. It's just a complete mess. But um, this was my first attempt, which I completely messed up, but I was trying to do it. And you're gonna make a ton of mistakes when you're trying to figure out manual mode. Just work through it. And once you become comfortable with it, it's totally up to you at that point. If you want to continue to use manual mode, 
but just understanding it is, is everything. I waited for years before understanding it. And once I did understand it, I feel like it was a light bulb moment that went off. And I immediately understand, understood so many more things about photography just by knowing how to use manual mode on my camera. That was it. Now, the sixth piece of advice is something that I call education and travel over gear. Now, why this is so important is because the majority of the first few years I was in photography, most of my time, most of my money went toward researching and buying new camera gear, constantly upgrading. I felt like I could purchase my way to better photos. And really all that I was doing is buying my way into creating higher resolution versions of the same garbage photos I was already taking. I wasn't getting better at photography. I was just shooting the same things with better cameras. And that's just a recipe for disaster. And once again, waste time, waste money. So you're so much better off taking that money and investing it in maybe some tutorials or just trying to educate yourself a little bit more about maybe composition or post-processing and then carve out some of that additional money that you have left over because you didn't blow it all on new camera gear and go travel somewhere. Now, when I first got started, I, I had no money left over and I ended up spending so much of my time just shooting in my local area, which is fine. But when you travel somewhere, that, that creates so much instant inspiration and excitement. You know, this is a, not an image, uh, oh, let me say that again. This is an image from not too long ago, but it's in my backyard in, or in the woods in my backyard. Here's another image of the woods in my backyard. And when I first got started, so many of my photographs were like that. And I didn't really travel anywhere, but taking some money and going on a trip somewhere and putting to practice the things that you taught yourself at home, you will learn more on that trip than you would have ever learned just in your backyard or somewhere, you know, in the, in a local reservoir or lake by your house by just going somewhere and just trying things out. This is an image from Acadia National Park. And once again, I, can, I think you, could, you could, would agree that this image would probably evoke much more inspiration than something like this would, standing in this location. Standing here is, to me, is awe-inspiring. Or take some of that money and go to Iceland, you know? Just going anywhere like that. Just getting out of your local area and putting the things to practice in a real-world scenario. Travel to the many national parks in the U.S any of those places is gonna be an absolutely fantastic to create that inspiration and put to practice what you learn. Now, the final piece of advice is something that I call get the reps in. And I know it sounds a little bit cliche, but it practice makes perfect and do less thinking and more doing. And I know that sounds a little counterintuitive because I just spent the last two minutes talking about teaching yourself stuff. That is important, but you can only do so much sitting behind a computer. Computers are a great place to teach you things. It's a great tool to, to educate yourself but taking that information and putting it in a real world scenario is, is absolutely imperative. And making mistakes. I personally believe that making mistakes is the best teaching mechanism that is available to us today. Make mistakes, figure out why it's a mistake, and then move on from there. And don't make that same mistake anymore. But getting out there, get the reps in, practice makes perfect, will make you a much better photographer as opposed to just sitting behind a computer like I did for so long, just researching camera gear all the time. So those are the seven pieces of pieces of advice that I really wish somebody would have told me when I was first getting started, because I know for a fact that those seven things, those particular seven items would have definitely sped up my progression in photography. So before I do wrap up this week's video, I just want to say a huge thanks to the sponsor of this week's video, which is Squarespace, who I use for all of my website and e-commerce needs. Squarespace provides a dynamic and attractive online platform to create your website. You can display your photography using Squarespace's professional portfolio designs and customize the layout and look and feel of your gallery just so you can make it your own. With Squarespace's traffic overview feature, you can track trends in page visits and views to better optimize your content. And you can even grow and engage with your customers with Squarespace's email campaign tools, which will enable you to create engaging emails that match your website with your products or blog post and logo, just so your messaging remains consistent. So if you're looking to start a new website or possibly upgrade your current website, check out squarespace.com forward slash Mark Denny for a free trial and 10% off your first purchase. So I really do hope you enjoyed this week's video. My goal in all of these videos is that you're able to walk away with at least one nugget of information that you find helpful, that you find meaningful or in inspiring, that you can apply to your photography moving forward. And if I can achieve that, that is always my, uh, that's always my kind of benchmark or success measurement as to whether or not a video was good or not for other people. So I really hope that I achieved that today. So if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments section below. I'll do my best to get back in touch with you. And if I did achieve my objective and you did learn at least one thing in this week's video, please give the video a thumbs up. Maybe subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed already. Share the video with friends or colleagues if you choose. 
And as always, I really do appreciate you taking the time to watch this week's video, and I will see you all next Wednesday. Bye.